our roads are no longer safe. According to the World Health Organization, road accidents are among the top 10 leading causes of death in Ghana. It estimates that about 33 people out of every 100,000 of the Ghanaian population will die through road accidents. Just last Friday, 62 lives were lost in two major accidents on the Mankasim and Kintampo roads. Several others were also left injured, probably maimed for life. Since then, the conversation about road safety has been rekindled. We need to get to the stage where the commission or the authority may be able to sanction public transport service providers for lapses in their operational standards, which is a culture that underlies the safety of the airline industry. And we are all aware of what happens in the airline if there's a crash. Uh, there's no way, recently we saw it, where the, um, um, that airline will fly until uh, things have been put in place. To achieve this and many others, the Commission will need the support of all stakeholders, including the media, for our collective good. Road safety is a way of life and a collective responsibility. The transport operators, that is GPRTU, Protoa, VIP, VVIP, etc., have a huge responsibility to ensure that their drivers are well educated and trained periodically. Currently, the Accra Cape Coast Road tops with the number of vehicle related deaths. Between 2004 and 2011, 7,000 people perished on that stretch. The Kintampo Tamale Road alone also recorded more than 2,000 casualties within the same period. It is not surprising that these roads form part of the seven most dangerous highways identified in the country. The others are the Accra Flower Road, Temahohoi Road, Kumasi Techiman Road, Takwadi Ulubu Road, and the Tamale Boga Road, which have all together recorded over 16,000 casualties. What is to account for these otherwise avoidable deaths? We have been finding out from the body responsible for ensuring that only licensed drivers in roadworthy vehicles are found on our roads. This is the Drivers and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA. Collectively, you know, um, I think we, we, we don't um, um, punish sufficiently when people choose to violate road traffic rules and regulations. That's because the outcome of that violation is usually what we are recording today. That if someone refuses to go for a roadworthy test, if someone refuses to come for a renewal of his or her license, if someone refuses to subject himself or herself for that periodic training, the outcome is that he's not competent enough to operate within the changing dynamics in the road environment. And once that is done, he's not able to respond appropriately to stimuli in the road space. And most likely, he's likely to, to, to get involved in a crash. And once that happens, if it's a, a high occupancy vehicle like what we are recording right now, um, most likely the fatality numbers are, are, are going to be high. Since 1991, over 46,000 people have lost their lives through road accidents. Ghana's Road Safety Commission and the Motor Traffic and Transport Division of the Ghana Police Service have on numerous occasions mainly blamed drivers for drunk driving, over speeding, fatigue driving and broken down vehicles. But for the drivers, the poor state of the country's roads is rather to blame for the fatal crashes. Sometimes, but 
said the can a panier singer no a way by week on so pataya sometimes cano a tutu. It is a cabby, but no matter how it is, we'll be clashing. Many of the casualties of these gory accidents are often passengers traveling via commercial buses. Batara is about to board a car to Tamale. He witnessed the Kintampo accident on his way to Accra last Friday. He says the authorities have failed Ghanaians. Before you reach the scene, you could see that people have to cast through the cars. They were not even ambulance. And according to the people that we met, they said it took about two hours for ambulance to come on the scene. And you could see only one police and the other. You, like, there's no any emergency response. People have to cut through this thing using their uh, catalyst. Others have to use their hands to cut through this thing. You can feel like the law, this, the, nothing is working. Systems are not working. You understand? If it takes two hours for an ambulance to get on the scene, then you should know that the country is sick. We feel like Ghanaians, our life has become so cheap in the hands of the leaders. You understand? And basically that is because of um, bad leadership. There's no an emergency system. A whole two car crash and Charlie people were left uh, left to perish. Al Hassan, who is also about to leave for Kumasi, says he always feels unsafe when traveling. Warning triangle niho, she niho. So, if it's a ninjina, part of the, uh, the cause of accident be bria yehu o ekwe muno. So on emeshe no. Eno pa hondo so I'm say drivers no so so carelessness kaho. So carelessness kaho because be bia accident you see you see. Me nyasho se na ke bia parki si ho no. Na ke bia am parki si ho. But sir, touching my Kintampo road, you know, so what fast? So I want to go and go and dump. In the cars, they drew a moko speed. It may 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 catch a government. It's a police. It drew sometimes be as highways, you know. I was say patrols, you know. Omu judge na, no more check it drivers, you know, so because yeah, na mi hunze accidents ni biwa ye over speed. Yet the DVL says it is doing its best to ensure safer roads for all within the country. One of the things we are doing, which I should mention is to engage the public to say, for example, in the airline, there's that provision for you to have speed governance in certain categories of vehicles. And we, we, we are moving straight forward to enforce that provision. We've been in discussion engaging the general public for a while now. We're trying to put in a very good implementation mechanism to roll that pro program out, which is to say that if you come in to register for commercial, vehicle, uh, commercial purposes, the vehicle as part of the procedure has to have a speed governor or a tachograph installed on it. That is to regulate its speed so that um, if the governor is, is, is tuned to, for example, 100 kilometers, it doesn't matter what you do, it will not speed beyond 100 kilometers. And the idea is simple. The vehicle itself and the road conditions are such that, you know, at various speed levels, impact levels, uh, severe and we have to control that and and there are some drivers who cannot control the vehicle or or respond to stimuli from the road environment at certain speeds and it is 100 for a purpose it is 80 for a purpose and we must ensure that we use systems and technology to regulate the road transport subsector so several ideas have been tabled as to how we can get our roads to be safer but one thing is for sure, and it is that both parties, that is drivers and the authorities, must play their roles to achieve this. Reporting for City News, my name is Niama Ama.